Skulking Dudley, as it became known, and you'll find out why soon enough, was a bit of a clod by all the accounts, and there were quite a few accounts. And he inherited Clot's Manor in the 15th century. Now, he was a bit of a brutish landlord, very unpopular with the locals, with his servants, with his neighbours. But one day he insulted the wrong person, a rich landowner, who challenged him to a duel. Now, honour would dictate that he uh, accepted this challenge, this conflict, but um, Dudley was a bit of a coward. Some be people are born plucky, but Dudley was born well, a plucked chicken. And instead of sending himself, he sent his daughter instead, Dionysia. Now, she had been a bit of a tomboy growing up, but she had turned into a fine figure of a young woman, and she had a sensible head upon her shoulder, except where it came to her father. The case with parents, the blind spots, and so she agreed to this crazy plan. She would go in her father's place, and so she found herself being strapped into her father's suit of armour. A little bit big for her, it had to be said, but as soon as the helmet was in place, and the faceplate was down, nobody would know it was her. All she had to do was go to the jaw, give him a couple of thwacks, and be done with it. Nobody would be any of the wiser. And so she was winched upon her father's war horse and sent upon her way early one morning. It brought a tear to her father's eye to see her riding off to defend the family honour, and then he went back inside and warmed himself by the fire with a nice glass of brandy. While poor Dionysia, rode through the chilly morning fog to the tawny ground, the tilting yard. And there were two attendants, one of them stamping his feet, the other one blowing into his hands until the judge gave him a frosty look and he stood to attention. And at one end was the tent of her opponent, trim in the morning breeze, its pennant snapping in that breeze, and standing by it was the war horse, and upon it was her opponent in his shining suit of armour with his splendid livery, holding a lance at a jaunty angle. So she went down to her end of the tilting yard, and there was her tent, her pennant, her colours, and from the rack of weapons she chose a lance, a nice long pointy one, actually a jaw. But then she had to balance upon her horse and aimed at the enemy and ride towards him and avoid being hit and knocked off the saddle herself. If only she paid more attention at the tournaments she had been to, to the technique of the knights, of the jousters, rather than the livery of this knight or reputation of that knight. Instead, she found herself at the business end of a lance, her enemy galloping towards her at full tilt. And before she knew it, crash bang wallop, she was knocked from the horse onto the ground a helmet knocked from her head, and her enemy had turned away at this point, trotted back to his rack of weapons, he dismounted, cast his shattered lance aside, and then he picked from the rack a morning star, and he started to swing it in a menacing way, walking towards her. And this is when he noticed that his enemy, his opponent, his fellow duelist, was a female, and not just a female, but a rather attractive young female. And this astonished him so much, he dropped the morning star upon his foot. Ow! <laughs> Cursing black and blue, he took off his own helmet, cast it aside to reveal that he was, in fact, a handsome young man himself, which brought a smile to Dionysius' face. You're, you're a woman in need of a hand? Please, sir. And so he took her hand and, and helped her up but because she was quite top heavy with the armour, she fell towards him and they were tip to tip. And he stared at her. Is there, is there something on my nose? She said. Because he was staring at her in that kind of weird way that men sometimes do. <laughs> he was smitten. He had never seen anybody so beautiful. Maybe there was something about a woman in a, a suit of armour that just did it for him. And so he there and then went down on one knee, which is not easy to do in a suit of armour, <laughs> and he proposed to her. 
Well, Dionysia, she weighed up her options, which in 15th century England were not many. But here was a rich landowner, landowner proposing to her, and so she accepted. And the matter of the jewel was settled as they settled into the jewel of matrimony instead. <laughs> and things seemed to settle down a while at Popton Manor. But Dudley, her father, he grew worse, actually. He was called behind his back, skulking Dudley because of his cowardice. But, you know, he knew people were, were insulting him behind his back. And he grew even crueler, even angrier. And he took particular sadistic delight in punishing one of his servants, one of his farm workers. But one day he went too far. In the harvest bale amongst the stooks of wheat, uh, he gave his servant a lashing, and not just a tongue lashing either. And it went too far, and his servant lost his rag. And he picked up a scythe, and he swung around, and he separated Dudley's head from his shoulders, which surprised Dudley a great deal. <laughs> but this, many things, are long peaceful at Potts Manor. For a while, it had to be said, the young man vanished, but nobody brought him to justice because they had, well, he had done them all the favour, to be honest. Even Dionysia and her new husband, who settled down to married life, but uh, their peace was disturbed because in the middle of the night there was a clanking and a clunking, and roaming through the grounds of Cotamella was the headless form of skulking, deadly, living or dying, that's his name. How he made a moan without his head, I don't know. Maybe it was like the sound that he made by blowing over the top of the bottle. So, um, it wasn't very nice anyway. And they couldn't get a week of sleep, so something had to be done. And so Dionysia, with a simple head upon her shoulders, got some clergymen in to do the deed, banish him with bell, book, and candle. And that's what they did. It took 12 of them in the end. But finally, Sculpin Dudley was exorcised from Clots and Manor. And finally, Dionysia and her new husband could set down to marriage life, enjoying only the pleasantest bumps in the night. Mm -hmm. And as for that suit of armour, well, she hung it, hung it up in the family hall as a reminder of the time she took to the tilting yard and won her man. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a fine lady in Belton did dwell, and she was courted by a squire who loved her full well. To be married in springtime, it was their intent, and their friends and relations, they gave their consent. An announcement was made for a wedding in May, and a farmer was chosen to give the lady away. But as soon as the lady, the farmer did spy, she was filled with such love, oh my heart, she did cry. So she turned from the squire, and nothing she said, and instead of being married, she took to her bed, and thoughts of the farmer, Filled in her mind until the solution the lady did find. A waistcoat and breeches the lady put on, and she went a hunting with her dog and her gun. And she hunted all around where the farmer did well, for she loved that young farmer, she loved him full well. Of time she fired, but nothing did kill. But until the young farmer came into the field, should you not be at the wedding, young farmer, she cried, to wait on your squire and give him his bride. Oh no, said the farmer, the truth I will tell. I can't give her away, for I love her too well. And by honour I'll win her with a sword in my hand. I will go to my lady whenever she commands. Well, it pleased the young lady to hear him so bold. And she gave him her glove, which was flowered with gold. I found it, she told him, as I came along. 
As I went a hunting with my dog and my gun. Then the lady went home and she spoke these words. Men, women, and children have heard as they heard. I have lost my gold glove, and he who brings it to me. I swear then that man my husband shall be. Well, it pleased the young farmer to hear this was so. And straight to the lady the farmer did go, saying, Dear honoured lady, I have found your gold glove, and I hope that you'll grant me your favour and love. What is already granted, the lady replied, for I love the sweet soul of the farmer, she sighed. I'll be mistress of your dairy and go milking your cow. While my jolly young farmer, you go whistling the plough. So the farmer was married to his lady love, who did win him a hunting with dog, gun, and gun.